Welcome to EZLM Learning Simplified. My name is Ruth and today we are going to be looking at sulfur and its compounds and um, we are going to be looking at some of the chemical properties of sulfur. So previously we talked about the allotropes of sulfur. We saw different allotropes and even how they are prepared in the lab. So today now we are going to look at sulfur generally. How does it react with different compounds? And then you're going to do one question. So when you burn sulfur in air, it's burnt with a bright blue flame um, to form a choking uh, gas. So what happens is uh, when sulfur burns in air, it forms sulfur uh, for oxide. And then also it has some traces of sulfur 6. The reason why there are some traces of sulfur Six acid, six oxide is because of the oxidation of sulfur four oxide. You come to that later on. Uh, both of these gases are actually very acidic. That's why they have like a choking feel. We are going to look at the, the properties of this sulfur also separately. So uh, gases. So sulfur reacts with oxygen in the equation to form sulfur four oxide. And then sulfur six oxide is formed due to the oxidation of sulfur oxide. Then uh, when you look at the reactions of sulfur with acid, uh, dilute acid do not have any effect on sulfur but they are usually oxidized by concentrated acids and specifically concentrated sulfuric acid and concentrated nitric acid. So with concentrated sulfuric acid when it's added, it oxidizes sulfur to sulfur four oxide, and then it's reduced to the same gas. So in this case, if you react sulfur with sulfuric acid, you form sulfur four oxide in water. This sulfur four oxide comes from the oxidation of sulfur to sulfur four oxide, and also the, the reduction of sulfuric acid to sulfur four oxide. And then with concentrated nitric acid, if you react it with sulfur, it's going to oxidize sulfur to sulfur four oxide and then itself is reduced to nitrogen four oxide. So sulfur when it reacts it with nitric acid it is going to form uh sorry sulfuric acid not sulfur four oxide and um nitrogen four oxide in water. So you can see there's a distinction between the reaction of sulfur with sulfuric acid and sulfur with nitric acid. So with sulfuric acid you can see it's a gas that is produced with uh, nitric acid, you can see it's an acid that is going to be formed. So the resultant solution, this solution that is formed here, gives a white precipitate. So if you were to add barium chloride in this solution, it would form a white precipitate. This is because there are some sulfate ions in solution. So barium sulfate will react with the sulfate ions. Barium ions will react with the sulfate ions in solution to form barium sulfate, which is a white precipitate. So if you were to look at the ionic equation, you can see barium ions reacting with sulfate ions to form barium sulfate. So when you notice, this is one of the tests, tests of um, sulfate ions. And later on, we are going to see other tests. So reaction with other elements, it reacts also with other elements to form sulfides. So you start with metals. If it reacts with metals, it forms metal sulfides, and they're usually majorly black. For example, if you react with iron metal, it's going to react with iron metal to form iron sulfide plus heat. This reaction produces a lot of heat. We just need to pick a glass rod that is heated and then you just place it next to the mixture and the reaction starts immediately it glows and then the reaction is very fast and extreme uh, to form the black ions to sulfide and a lot of heat is produced as you can see from the image so you can see this is just a glass rod that is heated this is a mixture of the powdered iron and powdered sulfur so if you just heat the glass rod and just bring it here, it starts the reaction very quickly. So during the reaction, the mixture glows spontaneously and the reaction starts. So this is one of the observations you notice in case you're asked to mention the observation. 
and then remember also the color changes that are happening if you are reacting with copper it would form copper 2 sulfide and as you can see then from the equation it is also a black solid for the nonmetals, uh, if you react sulfur with carbon, it forms carbon sulfide or carbon disulfide because the atoms of, of sulfur are two. And carbon for sulfide is usually having a very distinctive smell. It's usually used majorly to form pesticides because of its poisonous nature. With hydrogen, uh, sulfur reacts with hydrogen to form hydrogen sulfide. And with fluorine, it reacts to form sulfur fluoride. With chlorine, it forms sulfur chloride. Uh, with bromine, it forms sulfur bromide. And finally, with phosphorus, it forms phosphorus sulfide. So sulfur does not react with inert gases. Uh, it doesn't react also with nitrogen. We said, first of all, with the inert gases, it's because of they do not lose or gain electrons. Uh, they are inactive because they have full shells. And for nitrogen, it's because of the triple covalent bond. So it doesn't react with so many compounds as we discussed in nitrogen and its compounds. And then also with iodine, the reactivity also is going to not to happen because of the strong molecular, intermolecular forces in the iodine molecule. So next, you're going to look at the uses of sulfur. So it is used in the manufacture of sulfuric six acid in the contact process. So you see us mentioning this uh, again when we come to uh, this process. It is used as uh, fungicides for treatment of fungal skin diseases. So you notice it in, lab in the labels, especially when you buy the uh, uh, um, oils or lotions that are used to treat skin diseases. It's usually one of the uh, compounds that is used. It is used in the vulcanization of rubber. Vulcanization is the hardening of rubber. Rubber is usually very soft uh, when it's made. So what they do is they, they react um, rubber with sulfur and the sulfur atoms add themselves in between the molecules of rubber. So this causes it to be very hard. Uh, and you know for rubber, the hardness is the one that gives it its varied uses. Then it's also used in the manufacture of calcium hydrogen sulfide. This is used in bleaching uh, industries or textile industries. And then it is also used in manufacture of matches and fireworks. It's used in the manufacture of dyes. Um, it's the one that gives paint a smooth uh, texture. It's usually used in manufacture of ointment and drugs. You can see even how it's used to cure like fungal diseases. So it's, it's you, it is going to be in most of the ointments that are used for curing those diseases. It's used in the manufacture of air oil, especially the air oil that has to do with treatment of dead wraps. You notice that mostly sulfur is added in these products and also in the shampoos. And then a small amount of sulfur is usually added to concrete to prevent corrosion by acids. And then it's used in the manufacture of fungicides for spraying crops against fungal infections. Uh, and those fungal infections are diarrhea. So let's look at these two questions and then we will close the session. Set the observation made at the end of the experiment when a mixture of iron powder and sulfur are heated. So we are stating what you are going to notice at the end, not at the beginning. So at the end, we are going to see a yellow, a, a black solid of iron sulfide or iron two sulfide is formed. That is what we see at the end. But we know at the beginning when the reaction is occurring. We know that um, it's going to glow and produce a lot of heat, and then uh, the black solid is going to be formed. 
And then when a mixture of iron powder and sulfur is heated, it glows more brightly than that of iron filings and sulfur. I explain this observation. So basically, it's the same uh, reactant, but the difference is in the states in which they exist. This is in powder form, this is in filings. So the reason why the powder one will work faster is because in the powder, ion and sulfur mixture, there is an increase in surface area that helps to increase the rate of reaction. So this is completely opposite in the filings. That doesn't mean that the filings don't react, but they will, but not as brightly. Because you know the iron filings are larger in size. Those, those um, the ions and sulfur are larger, so the surface area is smaller. But for the iron powder, it's so small, so the surface area is large. Like the surface of iron and sulfur are more exposed to reaction. That is just the reason why. So that brings us to the end. Uh, so in the next lesson, we are going to look at some of the oxides of sulfur. So see you then.